Welcome to That's My Biz, the internet business showcase where we bring exposure to products, services, and special causes of local businesses and organizations. Thank you so much for joining us. We are coming to you live from the BizLinks TV studio. Brought to you by this site names. Welcome everyone. I am Pamela Alexander and once again we're here with you with That's My Biz and I have a wonderful guest for you, Miss Nancy Lewis. Nancy, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Nancy and I go way <laughs> back through networking and business. I've learned some great tips from and her. And I learned some great ones from you Good. also. Thank you so much. So I'm going to tell you all a little bit about Nancy first. In 1996, Nancy J. Lewis founded Progressive Techniques Incorporated based in Fayetteville, Georgia, where the theme of her organization is developing a better you. Nancy provides transformational training and development seminars and workshops on leadership, diversity, and inclusion, customer service, and professional development for corporations, government agencies, and academia. She stays busy. Yes. Um, Nancy is a registered corporate coach and provides business and career and executive coaching to business leaders. She is a former Dale Carnegie yes. instructor. If you all don't know, that is a huge deal. That is not common. And worked as an adjunct faculty instructor instructor at Georgia State University. Nancy has over 24 years as a seasoned professional in training and development and her high energy and passion yes. engages her audience with wisdom and insight that they can use immediately in their lives. Pro Progressive Techniques Incorporated also provides inspirational speaking at major conferences nationally and internationally. And after you hear this interview, I know everyone is going to want to get in touch with Nancy. Yay. Yes, yes, yes. So Nancy, <laughs> I, I, there's so many things that we'll be able to talk about. I'm going to try to squeeze as much information as I can for you all okay. in this, this 15 minute interview. But tell me some of the key things things that entrepreneurs need to know. Let's just dive right in. <laughs> <laughs> well, the first one we talked about, you have to have faith. Okay. Because as an entrepreneur, the business economy, when we had the recession, although we didn't participate, mm -hmm. but we were impacted by it. Okay. Um, because people would decide, I don't need this training. Okay. I don't need this coaching. Yes. I will do it in-house now. Yes. So you have to be on a faith walk to understand that you have to know this is your purpose. This is your passion. You have to love it enough that you'd be willing to do it for free. Okay. But we're not going to do but it for no, free. But understand, it is a business. Okay. It's not a hobby. Free means it's a hobby. Right. When you get paid, it means that you treat it as a business because you have to recognize it right. is a business mm -hmm. that you have. Mm -hmm. And people will try to free you to no end. Right. And sometimes you have to learn how to say no because there's a greater yes someplace right. else. And right. everybody who comes to you, as one friend said, all money is not good money. Mm -hmm. So sometimes so when people come to you with a deal or they say, right. I have this wonderful mm -hmm. deal. Do you mm -hmm. have a budget? A uh, well, no, well, I understand. Yeah. Right. Let me, when you find a yeah. budget, yeah. let's talk. Because yeah. if you don't value, if we don't, entrepreneurs must value their service, their commodity, mm -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. they have, they must value it. Right. If you don't value it, no one else will. Right. And also when we talk about our time, because um, I'm always <laughs> having a focus challenge, and something will be great that comes along, but I'm like, but that's going to take away from what I truly need to be focusing on right now. So talk about some of those impacts. Well, that I, I've, learned, have. I've learned that you have to become razor focused with mm -hmm. what you want. I mean, mm -hmm. you have to be hitting for the bullseye, mm -hmm. not the periphery, but the bullseye, mm -hmm. which means every event I really have this year decide that I only want to go to, this, to mm -hmm. events where God is directing me to go okay. to. Okay. Because there's a point I used to be out there everywhere. You know, if it was an event, I yep, was there. I mean, it's like, mm -hmm. hey, I got to be there. Okay. And I found that sometimes you can be at all these events and nothing happens because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it's not about networking. It's about mm -hmm. truly connecting with people mm -hmm. so that when you leave that event there will be further conversation right. dialogue that will take place right. and hopefully at some point that contact mm -hmm. will become a contract okay and so clearly you have to be clear on why am I going to this event who's okay. there that I need to talk to okay and what am I going to gain from it how can I bless somebody else what can how can I help somebody else it's not about always what you can get mm -hmm. but how can I help somebody else but don't get okay. it twisted okay as entrepreneurs we need business right and so we have to be clear on why are you going to this event. So now when I think about going to an event, I'm saying, why am I going? Mm -hmm. What am I going to achieve? Mm -hmm. Who's it that I might need to talk to? So mm -hmm. I go through a series of questions, which I always used to go through, but I'm taking it to a whole other level. Okay. And I have really scaled back. Okay. And what I found in being laser focused, I have the events I have attended this year have been razor focused. I have made connections at everyone I've attended wow, because wow. I have I've streamlined. It. I'm not okay. out there all the time You're because going with that purpose. I'm going with the purpose. Mm -hmm. I'm going with the mission. And I said, if I walk away with one key contact, right. I am I'm so happy. Right. And, and as we often talk about. It's about the contact. It's not about trying to walk away with an immediate sale. Or, or what, because for the most part, if you have a service business, you're mm -hmm. not going to walk away with an right. immediate sale. That, mm -hmm. That's not to say it can't happen, right. but most of the time you're going to have to cultivate that relationship. Right. And as you cultivate it, 
that will lead to where you'll get okay. a sale. Okay. And so people have to realize it's not going to be like, it's not a quick instant okay. fix. You do mm -hmm. something and automatically, okay, I'm going to hire you today. That mm -hmm. may be the exception, mm -hmm. but it's mm -hmm. certainly not the rule. Okay, fantastic. And so, so you have to be just willing to just cultivate the relationship, mm -hmm. get to know people. And as people get to know you, they'll make referrals okay. for you. Okay. And Absolutely. there's nothing worse, it's nothing better than having someone make a referral for you because they says, I sign off on Pam. Right. If, you, if I refer you, I know mm -hmm. I'm. Um, she's going to deliver, she's going to knock the ball out mm -hmm. the park. Mm -hmm. But you have to be careful who you even refer. Right. Absolutely. Because you, if they don't do the job. They will find you. Listen, right. And it becomes attached <laughs> to you on a, right. on a side that's not good. Right. So clearly vetting people before you mm -hmm. put them out there. Okay. You really have to okay. do that. You have to know that they don't have to be like you. Mm -hmm. but they have to carry their business practices the way you carry mm -hmm. yours. Okay. Okay. So I've heard focus and I've heard with the razor focus I'm, It's like and then having the faith. Now, what are three other big lessons that you've learned with your business? I learned that when I first started in business, as you, I'm sure you've had people who want to just pick your brain. Mm -hmm. Oh, I just want to go out with you and pick your brain. And you're like, yes. oh, really? You know, you'd be so, right. yes, pick my brain. Yes. And so, you know, you want to help people. Mm -hmm. But I realized that you have to place value on your time. Okay. So now I'm a coach. Mm -hmm. So I, well, you can pick my brain, but I'm your coach. Right. So while you're picking it, I'm getting paid. Right. And so, exactly. again, it comes back to you have to, entrepreneurs have to begin to place value on their commodity, their service, whatever they, you have to place value, which means there has to be sometimes a price tag attached because mm -hmm. if you continue to do it for free, mm -hmm. when you decide, you know what, I'm starting to charge now, mm -hmm. people say, but I've been getting this for the last five years, right. you never charged me. So you right. deal with that issue. And sometimes right. you have to realize you have to help your family understand right. that you have a business. Right. Because when you sometimes are self employed, they think you can go do this errand, this yeah. errand. So you have to educate that this is a business. Mm -hmm. And so I tell people, treat your business as a business. So mm -hmm. have a room that's designated mm -hmm. if you're a solo preneur or mm -hmm. you work in your home. Have it, th this is your office, that this is where you do business. So okay. you're not answering the home line during right. the day. Right. Or you're not answering another call. You're taking calls that are coming in from the business. Treat yeah. your business as a business. Mm -hmm. Get you an advisory group. Mm -hmm. Somebody that you can talk to that will tell you that's a good idea or that sucks. Right, right. Who will give you honest feedback. Right. Your own CEO board mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. you create. Okay. Everyone needs that. Someone right. to sound. Someone who has right. light mm -hmm. thinking. Mm -hmm. Who are eagles who are going right. where you want to go. Right. Who will pour into you and you'll pour into them. Right. But they'll give right. you real deal. They'll give you the real feedback that's that you cool. need to hear that other people will not do. Okay. And and hitting on the um, home office, but it's not always even just in a home office, even when you're going out. Talk a little bit about what the infamous work-life balance, <laughs> but I like to call work-life integration. It's no longer about balance. So talk a little bit about that and how you do that with your business and what you suggest to other businesses. Well, there was a time where, you know, this when the scale gets like this, where it's really tilted, mm -hmm. where it's really out of balance, because there is no way you can have total balance right. unless you have the same weights on both sides. Right. Mm -hmm. But the key thing is when you realize one side is tilting too far okay. on the other side you have to come back and what I realize is that you have to take time I I, I don't subscribe to the work-life integration because okay. there's no balance okay and what you have is that you have home and person everything's meshed together and then that's not good for you because mm -hmm. then you don't have a personal life you mm -hmm. have business blending in mm -hmm. so you really have to make the separation where like when you go to some place you turn mm -hmm. off your cell phone because mm -hmm. I'm not mm -hmm. working like on right. weekends okay, okay. Absolutely. I'm not working it's like I am on I'm off right absolutely and somebody text you even when I work with a lot of my clients I say you may get a text from somebody on mm -hmm. Friday evening at 9 o'clock mm -hmm. now reality is that right. there is nothing you could do at right. 9 o'clock right. so read the email but don't respond right because once you respond you take yourself off of work right if you go on vacation you're on vacation in Hawaii mm -hmm. and somebody sends an email during the middle of the week, and you have clearly on your email <laughs> out of the office for right. a whole week or two right. weeks and right. then you're responding to the email. Right. You have simply taken yourself off a vacation. Right. And who's right. impacted your family. Right. And so it's really up to you to, to control you, what people are doing. You have what you to allow. establish boundaries. Right. That are some of them are, that are non-negotiable. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And so when people right. call you sometimes or they want you to do certain things. So like, nah, like one lady said, well, I'm going to send you something. I said, well, I won't see it till the next day because right. I won't be looking at that right. at that time. She's right. like, I said, I've made some changes yes. this year. Yes. <laughs> so I've had to realign uh, some of the things mm -hmm. I was doing mm -hmm. because work-life balance, you don't ever totally have it, right. but you just have to realize when the scale is tilted mm -hmm. too far okay. to one side. Okay. But work-life integration means that everything's meshed together. Okay. I don't support that. Okay. Okay. So now tell me with uh, progressive techniques, one, how, how it came about, <laughs> and then tell us a little bit more about the services that you offer. Well, progressive techniques came about because I had a lot of jobs. You know, I was okay. I'm a boomer, and boomers typically have one job. I okay. had about seven or eight jobs. Okay. I changed jobs regularly. My mom said, "I'm just so concerned with you. You can't hold a job." <laughs> <laughs> I just said, "No, if I'm not happy, right. I have to move go someplace yeah. else." And so that was not something that was part okay. of her and her her right. experience. You know, you right. get a good job. You know, you got staff and everything. You fly. I was working right. for the airline. You gonna leave all that? I'm like, right. mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And she said, "Well." 
are you sure that's what you need to do? I said, well, I had prayed about it. Yeah. And I've gotten clearance. So mm -hmm. I, I went for an interview for um, a company, and they were looking for contract trainers. Okay. And the position was for six months, but mm -hmm. you had to be willing to you know, leave your daytime right. job. So when I went for the interview, they said, so if we hire you, <laughs> how are you going to do that? Mm -hmm. I said, if you hire me, I'll be working for you. I'll be leaving the airline. Right. And they were like, really? I'm like, yes. I said, so it's it's a divine appointment. I know because right. I worked in HR in my, one of my last jobs. Okay. And in HR, you know too much about okay. everything. Okay. And you have to say stuff to people they don't want to hear. Okay. And so I realized that. So I'm like, okay, uh, in many jobs I had, I said, I'm passing through here. But I always knew the entrepreneurial path was right. where I was right. headed for because I like the freedom. Oh, freedom. Yes. Woo. <laughs> I mean, the freedom you have is incredible. Now, there, mm -hmm. there that's, this, that's a plus. But you right. also have the part where you work sometimes late at night because there right. are times you have to, you know, mm -hmm. you burn the candle mm -hmm. both ends. Mm -hmm. You have to be clearly mm -hmm. You have to be clear on when you have right. to stop doing that. Mm -hmm. But I realized that when uh, I told him that you call me, then the job would be mine. Right. So I just said, whatever happens, I said, it's in God's hands. Because I've been praying about it, and I knew I wanted to leave. Right. They called me and said, we're offering you this six-month contract assignment. Okay. And they said, we want you to start at this particular date. I was like, yes. I attended, okay. went to work the next day, gave them two-week notice, okay. and the rest, shall we say, is okay. history. Right. And so I knew then, because I've been doing training, I've been teaching Dale Carnegie courses part-time, I was a professor okay. at Georgia State, so okay. I was doing, I was okay. moonlighting already. Okay. okay, so and then did you do the contract job under progressive technique, is that how you created yeah, progressive that's, yeah, techniques that, to yes. be the business yes. that was the contract yeah. company? Yeah. Okay, fantastic. And so that's how I evolved, and then it dawned on me like halfway through the project, I said like, it's three months, so three months? This project is over. Mm, okay. I said, "Oh, this is this is real." Right. <laughs> I like, right. I, I, I want to have to do something afterwards. So I began the process mm -hmm. of developing relationships and beginning to say, "I need to begin to plant some seeds because mm -hmm. at the end of the six months, I'm not trying to go back to work right. for somebody." Right. I like right. the freedom. Exactly. I like being my own yeah. boss, yeah. even though it's a faith yeah. walk. But I knew it was what God had called me to do. It was, it was a passion and a purpose that He had given me to be able to connect with people and to engage people. And I knew it was only Him. Mm -hmm. So I knew that I hit whom He calls, right. He equips. Right. That's right. So I had been called, so I was like, okay, now you got to hook me up with some more right. people. Right. So that began the process of really learning the art of networking and connecting. Mm -hmm. Okay. And actually asking people, if you like what I do, okay. tell somebody else. Oh, fantastic. So, and I know you do a lot of networking, <laughs> getting out and networking yes. and strategic networking yes, now. Yes, But also, tell me about how you're using social media today. Social media, I am a Facebook evangelist. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> good, good. I mean, Facebook is free. Okay. I, you know, I love free and deeply discounted. Okay. You know, entrepreneurs <laughs> love that. <laughs> That's we right. love free stuff. Uh, but I realize sometimes you have to pay. And I right. understand that there are times you have to pay for certain things. And I, mm -hmm. I get that. And I do that. Mm -hmm. But I love social media. I do a lot. Of, I truly am a Facebook evangelist because mm -hmm. I'm on Facebook a lot. I do LinkedIn because LinkedIn has been very beneficial for me in terms of getting me interviews with people, getting me access to people mm -hmm. I wanted to. Every business owner needs to be on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, every business owner Absolutely. needs to be on LinkedIn. It's free. Every, I mean, it's, it's the, why wouldn't yeah. you want to connect yeah. with yeah. like-minded yeah. people? Yeah. Yeah. Because it also creates a forum where you can meet other right. people right. through the people that you know directly. Right. So I love it. I mean, I tweet not as much as I need to. I do tweet, though, but I do okay. have a presence, not the way I need to. But right now, LinkedIn and Facebook work for me mm -hmm. because they mm -hmm. are things that I use. Now, right. I do Instagram periodically, but Instagram, okay. I just haven't figured out how to leverage Instagram. Okay. But every person who's in business needs to realize you have to be conscious of social media and the right. impact it has. Absolutely. Because it reaches so many people so quickly. Mm -hmm. And so if you're not doing that, you're missing it. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So while we're on the subject, tell everyone your, your handles. Oh, my handles for, <laughs> uh, tw if you want to tweet me, it's Nancy J. Lewis. If you want to find me on Facebook, it's Nancy J. E. Lewis. Okay. And LinkedIn is Nancy J. Lewis. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic. So you all heard that consistency in there. So, so make you sure you all me. reach out to Nancy. And I'm want... sure it's also on your website. Yes, it is. Okay. okay. I think it is. I don't know. I'm, I'm in the process of trying to get my website updated. So okay. it may not be there. I okay. don't know. Okay. Getting a website updated is another opportunity another opportunity <laughs> fantastic so now tell everyone about nancy has a uh, great program that you've been doing for quite a while six now six years six years so she's transforming women entrepreneurs right so it's a great event it's quarterly is that yes, correct it's quarterly. um tell everyone about that well transforming women entrepreneurs is a vision that Rhonda Hyde and i had six years ago to create a forum for business women and business professionals to come together and actually mm -hmm. share information mm -hmm. over breakfast in a place where people are ego minded okay. and uh, after the first year Rhonda decided to step away and I knew that what we had was a good idea so I wanted to continue with it so okay. I've been running with it since then and just been getting different people to come in and speak and quarterly we do okay. it uh, it's an intimate group 
25, 30, and sometimes up to 50 people that are there. And when we do our quarterly, our one in March, which is our all day when we have okay. many more people than that. Okay. But the ones we do uh, in June, September, November are usually around 25 to 35 people, which is okay. a great group for you to really mm -hmm. connect with people. Absolutely. And you have access to anybody you want to yeah. talk to. Yeah. I mean, you what better form than if you want to talk sometimes to a person from corporate, you can walk over to them and talk to them right. because we have breakfast. Right. Over breakfast, you get to talk to people. It's just a yeah. wonderful form. So we've just had a variety of topics. You were mm -hmm. one of my speakers yes. one quarter. Mm -hmm. And so I've just... I tap into people that right. I know who have like spirits, right. like minded and like minded right. and also like spirits right. and to come and share with us. So the one we're doing in June, June thirteenth, two thousand fourteen, okay. from okay. eight thirty to ten thirty AM at the wonderful Commerce Club mm -hmm. is on the power of branding, is yours working. Okay. Because and you can follow you on Facebook. Yes. And the it's all on Facebook. It's all on Facebook. <laughs> and, you know, if you go to my Facebook page, I'm always kind of sharing it. It's on other people's I share it on other people's pages mm -hmm. and everything. That's so right. I work it. I mean, you know, it's free. I mean I use I have a business page on Facebook. I have a TWE mm -hmm. page on Facebook. Fantastic. I'm with another young lady and I posted this. So it's getting posted a lot. And then people are sharing good, it. Good, and so good. I asked the speakers to please share it on their pages and everything. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it is a great form. So Facebook, I mean, again, you have to choose what's going to work best for you. I like Facebook. Uh, Instagram, I just, people say I should move to Instagram. I just, okay. I'm not sold yet. Okay. So I can't yeah. go there yet. Yeah. Until I'm sold okay. on something and see how it can work for me, I just right. can't do that. But LinkedIn, exactly. it's on LinkedIn. I post it there. So I use every avenue I possibly can. I go to Access, Access Atlanta. Okay. There's a lot of places you mm -hmm. can post stuff for free. So Absolutely. I look for all those sites. Absolutely. And I put it on That's there. That's what you have to do. You have to get the word out there. And, and hopefully you all are picking up on some of those techniques. And even in what Nancy is saying about Instagram, figure out if it's going to work for your yes. business first before you do it. Don't just dive in and do it so I think that's that's a hidden gem that uh, she just just threw out to you and she has many Nancyisms as well <laughs> correct <laughs> I do I even did an ebook of Nancyisms right. on Amazon <laughs> amazon.com yes and so you can put, uh, I think it's Nuggets for Life, Nancyisms. I don't even know what I, you know, I did because people kept saying, <laughs> you put all these Nancyisms out there. I'm like, I'm into inspiration. Yes. I mean, I'm into giving people encouragement. That's, That's what right. I do. That's who right. I'm. I'm an encourager. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I lift people up. Mm -hmm. I want them to tap into that mm -hmm. hidden potential mm -hmm. inside mm -hmm. of them. Mm -hmm. And so people are riding and walking around using only a very small percentage mm -hmm. of what God has given them. Mm -hmm. So if you can just tap into another one to two percent, you're right. doing better. Right. So people kept saying, "Do something with the Nancyism." So I did an ebook yeah. uh, on Amazon.com. You can put Nancyisms for life, and you can find it something like that yeah. on Amazon. But yeah. it's only like a yeah. dollar ninety nine. Yeah. So it's like get it. I have it on my Kindle. <laughs> fantastic, <laughs> fantastic. Well, thank you. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And that blends me right into my other question because for those that don't know, Nancy is also an ordained minister. So tell everyone how you blend that um, <laughs> with your business, your faith, and your message. Uh, well, I just is who I am. So when I go places, I will talk about the word. And I can talk about the word without pulling out my Bible. Mm -hmm. Because when I'm doing management training, sometimes I'll tell people that you'll know about a good manager by the fruit that they send out. Mm -hmm. And so if you're a good manager, how you treat people, it will be evident by what you do with people. Mm -hmm. And so I use a little anecdotal stories from the Bible mm -hmm. that people who know the word well, know that mm -hmm. it's a word. Those mm -hmm. who do not will say... I like your stories. Yeah. <laughs> I just laugh. I say, well, thank you. And sometimes I'll say, you know, so a man think of so is he. So right. if you're thinking about something long enough, yeah. it becomes your reality. Right. Uh, the death and life are in the power of the tongue. You have to be careful what you say. I said, where well, there is no right. vision, people perish. So I will use the word out there, yeah. and God gives me holy boldness. But I'm mindful of where I am. I'm mm -hmm. always critically mindful, and I use wisdom mm -hmm. in how I do it. Okay. And I let the Lord direct mm -hmm. how it's done. So you mm -hmm. have to be clear on your path. You have to be clear on when you're supposed to do something and when you're not. Right. And in, in those veins, you have to just operate and flow. Okay. So I flow because it's his gift. So I said, you let me, you use the gift how you want to in this mm -hmm. environment. Mm -hmm. So before I go speak, I always pray and say, however you want to use me, then you use me. Whatever needs to be said, let it come out. Absolutely. Sometimes things that weren't planned come out, but I know it's for somebody in the room. Right. That is wonderful. Wonderful. So I just blend like this. It's my foundation. It's who I am. So mm -hmm. I spoke for a group, uh, last week and at the end the man came you know he was high on the food chain he said you're a woman of faith I was like yes mm -hmm. he said I noticed how you just wove stuff in there he said right. he said you had me taking notes he said and he said I just need to tap into you he mm -hmm. said I need to talk to you I said mm -hmm. wonderful yeah. so it comes through he mm -hmm. said just something about your your presence he said you just mm -hmm. he said and then you begin to speak and you some yeah. of the things you said he said because I'm a man of faith I knew that what it was coming right. from absolutely so I told you you have to hit people on the head with a That's bible right. and say you know you know, you need yeah. to do this. People should sit in your walk. Right. There should be a said where there is your light should shine. So I always say, Lord, let my light shine that others mm -hmm. will see you mm -hmm. and me. Right. That's it. That's it. I mean, that's so I just love it. So it's like, you know, exactly. hey, what more could you say about it? Right. So now tell me what other creative things you're working on. What other creative things I'm working on? Oh, I'm working on a book. Okay. <laughs> okay. And by faith, I'm working to have it out the first of June. 
and it's dealing wow. with millennials. So it's around the corner. So I, I have so much information because I want it to be a quick read. I want okay. it to be an easy read. I'm doing it with a fellow colleague, mm -hmm. and it's basically dealing with the, the topic of texting and talking and all okay. that. Okay. And how people really have to get to where they learn how to talk again okay. to each other because right. we're doing so much of the social right. media. And, and I know it's important. You need to text sometimes. You need right. to email. I get all that. Mm -hmm. But you also need to talk to people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we're losing Absolutely. that art. We're Absolutely. losing that social skill of how to talk yeah. to people. So yeah. that by faith, I'm working on that yeah. actively. I have you to send the cover to the copyright office. So okay. the co the, all that's done have okay. the ISBN numbers and all that. So it's just okay. synthesizing the information. Great. So that's going to be, I think when it comes out, I think that's going to really uh, be a great caveat for launching me into a lot of places I'm okay, trying to get to. Fantastic. And that's what I was going to ask. How are you going to use it? Is um, a launching pad in because your millennials, business. I do a lot of stuff around the generational divide already. Okay. I talk to a lot of groups about how to leverage the different generations together okay. in the workplace. Okay. So I think this will help me in terms of facilitating more open doors okay. because it's really dealing with okay. an issue that people are facing texting and talking okay. in the workplace and emailing and people not talking to each okay. other and how that's impacting relationships right. because at the end of the day, you have to talk to okay. people. Okay. You gotta talk to. Them. So you can you can email all you want to. You can text all you want to. Yes. But at some point, you have yeah, to pick too. the phone, walk down the hall, and talk to somebody. Absolutely. And so I'm just looking. I have some other books that I'm working on, but I really want to. I do a lot of coaching. Okay. I love the coaching, the one-on-one okay. -on -one coaching, okay. because I get a so chance. So who are the types of clients you work with? Government, corporations. Yeah entrepreneurs yeah. who want to be coached okay. and I deal with them on their career and business okay. and we always get mm -hmm. into li life always slips in because right. it, right. it just does it's work life balance right <laughs> it just does <laughs> and so I had a lady I was working with uh, a couple weeks ago and she came in and because as a minister you know you're in mm -hmm. your ministry as mm -hmm. well she came in and I said you don't have any joy mm -hmm. I said you know you mask it very well wow. I said but what I like to do yeah. before we end I said I like to pray for you yeah and I mean that takes. And she said, "Oh yeah, sure." Yeah. So before we ended the session, I yeah. prayed for her mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I said, "You you don't you yeah. don't have the joy that you need." I said, mm -hmm. "You have a wonderful spirit, but your joy is gone." Okay. Wow. And she said, "I said the average person wouldn't see that." I said, "But I'm looking not just you as in the physical. I'm looking at you in the spiritual realm." Okay. And okay. so people get all of that, right? And, th and that's fantastic because that's not something that you'll always necessarily get from a coach, no. even from a life coach. Yeah, that's not something that you'll actually. So I get love that. So I mean, I have a lot more coaching clients, and I'm really loving it. Okay, the one on one. Yes. So everyone, be sure to continue to connect with Nancy. Look out for Nancy. Give everyone your contact information again and how they can reach out. They can reach me at seven seven zero nine six four five five three three. That's seven seven zero nine six four five five three three. Or you can reach me at mm -hmm. Nancy at Progressive Techniques Inc. dot com. Nancy at ProgressiveTechniques.com or you can go to the website, the www.ProgressiveTechniquesInc.com. And throw that Facebook out there again. And Facebook, me. Nancy J. E. Lewis. Facebook, you can find me out there. You can tweet me at Nancy J. Lewis. That's my handle. You can go to LinkedIn, Nancy J. Lewis. I'm there. Now, you all heard it at the beginning when I read her bio. She said she was full of energy, and I think you <laughs> delivered on that. Um, some, some fantastic information. Nancy, thank you so, thank much, you so much for, for joining me. me. I love having uh, these, these guests on That's My Biz and sharing our guests with you all. Uh, everyone, please go to bizlinks.tv so that you can check out the shows on demand. And um, until next time, let's connect. Thank you for joining us. Today's show can be viewed on demand on our website at www.bizlinks.tv. If you are interested in having your products, services, or special cause showcased on our program, submit an inquiry to That's My Biz at bizlinks.tv. In addition, information on advertising and hosting your own show can be found on our website at bizlinks.tv.